In this video, we're going to talk about the first night of the Democratic debate. And believe it or not, that night was the least crazy out of the two. So we're going to talk about some of the crazy policies they had, such as eliminating private insurance and abortion funded by the government. Before we get into that, make sure you subscribe so you can always stay informed and get the sources I provide down below. So we're going to start with health care and show that in the Democratic Party today, if you do not support eliminating private insurance altogether, you are attacked for it. But I do want to ask a follow up on this one. Just to be just to be very clear, I'll give you 10 seconds. Would you replace private insurance? No, I, I think the choice is is fundamental hey, wait, to wait, wait. our Congress ability to get wrong. everybody yeah, care Private insurance is not working for tens of millions of Americans. When you talk about the co-pays, the deductibles, the premiums, the out-of-pocket expenses, it's not working. <coughs> that's How right. can you so, defend so for the those system for that's not, is not working? They can choose Medicare. For the culinary workers in the you matter who I listen to, you've got to start by acknowledging the system is for not working plans, for people. Uh, they're able to keep them. Why are you defending Americans private insurance? They, they like their private health insurance, by the way. It should be noted that 100 million Americans but we should also give them the option to buy private insurance. Why do we have to stand for taking away something from people? And also, it's bad policy. If you go to every hospital in this country and you ask them one question, which is how would it have been for you last year if every one of your bills were paid at the Medicare rate? Every single hospital administrator said they would close. And the Medicare for All bill requires payments to stay at current Medicare rates. So to some extent, we're basically supporting a bill that will have every hospital close. Here, actually makes a really good point. 69% of Americans like their current coverage and 80% like the quality of their health care. So what these Democrats are suggesting, which is completely eliminating private insurance, does not go in line with what most Americans actually want. And if you also look at the reimbursements through private insurance and through Medicare, just as Delaney said, there's a big difference there. Private insurance reimburses hospitals significantly more, which is why if you're on Medicare, it is much more difficult to find a doctor or a hospital who will accommodate you for that very reason. That moms across this country are getting paid less simply because they're women. Also pursue legislation so that women are paid equal pay for equal work in this country. It's about uh, the fact that African-American women make 61 cents for every dollar a white man makes. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this part, but it's been, it's been debunked time and time again. If you just look at average earnings, then it's true that women earn less than men, but that does not take into account the jobs they work, the hours worked, uh, vacation time, and things of that nature. So it's just, it's constantly being promoted, and it's not an accurate statistic. Now, speaking of women, we now come to the view of the Democrats that I believe is the most extreme, and that's their view on abortion, where it's not just well into the third trimester, it's now also funded by the government. And healthcare also has to mean that every woman can make her own decisions about her own body and has access to the care that makes that possible. Or would you put limits on uh, any limits on abortion? I would make certain that every woman has access to the full range of reproductive health care services, and that includes birth control, it includes abortion, it includes everything for a woman. It should not be an option in the United States of America for any insurance company to deny woman coverage for their exercise of their right of choice. All of you on stage support a woman's right to an abortion. You all support some version of a government health care option. Would your plan cover abortion, Mr. Secretary? Uh, yes, it would. Uh, I don't believe only in reproductive uh, freedom. I believe in reproductive justice. And you know what that means is that just because a woman, or let's also not forget someone in the trans community, a trans female, uh, is poor, doesn't mean they shouldn't have the right to exercise that right to choose. And so I absolutely would cover the right to have an abortion. So not only should government pay for abortions, but every insurance company should be forced to as well. Now Castro has gotten a lot of flack for talking about trans women and their reproductive rights because trans women cannot physically get pregnant, so it makes no sense for them to have abortions. There was also a lot of this going on during the first debate. Some Democrats want a marginal individual tax rate of 70% on the very highest earners, those making more than $10 million a year. Would you support that? This economy has got to work for everyone. And right now we know that it isn't. And it's gonna take all of us coming together to make sure that it does. Necesitamos incluir cada persona en el éxito de esta economía. Pero si queremos hacer eso, necesitamos incluir cada persona en nuestra democracia. Uh, cada, votar, ca cada votante necesitamos 
la representación y cada voz necesitamos escuchar. Senator Booker, what would you do on day one? And this is a situation that the next president will inherit. Yes. La situación ahora es inaceptable. Este presidente ha atacado, ha demonizado los inmigrantes. Es inaceptable. Voy a cambiar este. Secretary Castro, you have 45 seconds, sir. Yes, uh, me llamo Julian Castro y estoy postulando por presidente de los Estados Unidos. Let me be clear. I have no problem with Spanish. I think it's I think it's great to be bilingual. I actually am as well. But the problem that I have is that they were asked questions in English, and then both Booker and Beto answered in Spanish, but they didn't even answer the question. They just said something in Spanish that made it seem like an answer, but it really wasn't. Now, Castro gets a pass because not only is he Latin, but he wasn't just announcing his presidency in Spanish. He wasn't actually answering a question. But for Beto and Booker, it's straight up just pandering, and they did it poorly. It wasn't even well-spoken. Now, we haven't heard from Inslee for a while, so let's jump in on him and see how he's doing. Governor Inslee, just this next question a second. is to you. <laughs> you got me? Rachel. You got me? All right, maybe not. That was just a little bit creepy. Let's keep going. I want to make it clear. This is supposed to be the party of working people. Yes, we're supposed to be for a 70% tax rate on the wealthy. Yes, we're supposed to be for free college, free public college for our young people. We are supposed to break up big corporations when they're not serving our democracy. According to de Blasio, Democrats need to be in favor of 70% tax rates, free college for everybody, and breaking up corporations who they view as not helping their democracy. Now, those three things I think are a little bit radical, but the 70% tax rate, that's, that's insane. And I don't think it's really working because if you look at him, he's the mayor of New York. And if those are the policies he's implementing in New York City, it's not working very well. There were also a lot of very loaded questions, mostly from Rachel Maddow. Here's an example. The idea of active shooter drills in schools. Does school shootings seem like an almost every day or every week occurrence now? They don't make a complete news cycle anymore, no matter the death toll. As parents are so afraid as their kids go off to school that their kids will be caught up in something like Things like this are why I'm not a fan of Maddow. Now, you can point to these school shootings and say that they're big deals and we should do something about that. And that's a position that I think is understandable. But to then say that they happen every day or at least every week, which is not even remotely close to being true, that's just fear mongering. And it's a very, very poorly worded question. And it's really just trying to evoke a specific response. So I do not approve of that question whatsoever. On a less serious note, let's see what Jay Inslee has to say. And I have a feeling this is going to be very important and very shocking. Trinity and I have three grandchildren. We love them all. Did you hear that? He loves all of his grandchildren. Maybe there have been rumors going around that he has a favorite or something. I don't know. But he just wanted to make sure that we all knew that. And I'm just poking a little bit of fun. Obviously, that's not anything serious. I just thought it was something a little bit funny to say in a national debate, talking about your children and having to specify that you love all of them. It just seemed funny to me. So that's all the highlights that I had for this first night of the Democratic debate. There are things that maybe you thought were more important. These are just the things that I thought were the most extreme and also just things I wanted to bring to your attention and a few were just for entertainment. If you enjoyed this video, then let me know down in the comments because I'm debating whether or not I want to do the second night. This one took a lot more work than I anticipated. So if it's not super well received, I'll probably just go on to other things. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.